Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone. So this week I have a very interesting book for you. Interesting in the fact that I usually would not spend this kind of money, especially on a business book that's rather new. So the book is The 16 Word Sales Letter, A Proven Method of Writing Multi-Million Dollar Copy Faster Than You Ever Thought Possible by Evaldo Albuquerque. Now, I was skeptical because A, I usually don't like to buy business books that, was, that were written you know, in the last few years just because there's a lot of garbage business books out there. Plus, this book, which was mm, about 90 pages, was $40. That's right, $40 on Amazon. But I decided to buy it because one, it came recommended through a uh, very reliable uh, source who really knows the, a lot about copywriting. And as I always mention to you, never make the mistake of not buying a book because it's too expensive. You need one really good idea that will change your life or your business, and it makes the book all that much worth it. And I can tell you this book is worth the $40. The reason why is that copywriting is a lost art. It's the ability to write extremely powerful messages that make somebody take action. And in the world of business, that's what everything is about, is can you put a belief or a message out there in the world that will make somebody take action. So let me give you the one key thing I learned from this book and not give you the rest of it because you do have to buy it, right? Knowledge is earned. There's no supplement you know, or replacement to it. You have to earn the knowledge. So let me share with you the one powerful thing that I learned from this book without giving too much of it away. You know, the thing about knowledge and wisdom is that it really does have to be earned. There is no replacement to it. There is no shortcut. But the one powerful thing I got from this book was this. The secret to writing extremely powerful copy is defining one belief for your audience. What does that mean? Well, looking into the book, the reason why you have one belief is that you live in a noisy world, right? And you have to be able to get attention. The one that people get attention or pay attention to something is when there's change, something's new and novel. And when it comes to defining one belief, the author says you have to define it this way. And after you define this one belief, there are 10 questions you must answer to strengthen it. The 10 questions I'm not gonna to reveal to you, you should buy the book. But here's how you develop a one belief. The one belief is that a new opportunity is the key to the desire of the customer and it's only attainable through your one new mechanism. Now let's break that down for a second. The new opportunity. What's a new opportunity? So let's break that down piece by piece. What's a new opportunity? Well, when you think about one belief, it'll help you judge the strength of your idea based on that one new opportunity, right? That'll tell you whether you have something new or something that's not that great at all. This new opportunity is kind of what makes your unique selling proposition or makes your idea actually novel. And when you present this new opportunity, it has to be seen as the key to an existing desire. Your, your uh, responsibility as a marketer is not to create desire to nothing. You have to look for existing desires where they already are. And that takes me to desires, right? Desires are things that we want, right? And it's not something you can manufacture. You have to think deeply about what is important to the customer you're trying to sell to and what actually moves them. Now, the way you can think about desires is like this, is that it has to provide benefits in this realm. It can be the key to desire. It, so the way you should think about desire is like this, is that it can be the key to the desire only if it'll help them feel more significant, respected, and valued. And if it can help increase their mental, physical, social, emotional, sexual, or financial well-being. Or the opposite way, if it can decrease or eliminate the events that will negatively impact their mental, physical, social, emotional, sexual, or financial well-being. You have to think about it like that. And finally, we get to the new mechanism, right? Essentially, the vehicle, which is your product or service, to take them from where they are today to where they want to be, which is their desire. And while the new opportunity reveals the what that's unique about your solution, the new mechanism is going to show the how. Now, here's my favorite part. Let me read to you some examples of one beliefs from really famous companies. So P90X, everybody remembers P90X? Here's their one belief. Avoiding the plateau effect is the key to building muscle, and it's attainable only through P90X muscle confusion system. Let's break that down. Avoiding the plateau effect. There's the new opportunity, right? The plateau effect. Avoiding it, right? That's new. Is the key to building muscle. There's the desire and it's attainable only through P90X's muscle confusion system. 
That's the new mechanism. And think about how novel that is. Muscle confusion system. I remember when I started doing P90X a long time ago, that's what got me, this muscle confusion system. Here's another one. Everybody knows proactive uh, for, for acne. At attacking acne at every stage of the cycle is the key to keeping your skin clear and healthy looking. And it's attainable only through proactive combination therapy. So attacking acne at every single stage of the cycle, that's the new opportunity, is the key to keeping your skin clear and healthy looking. That's the desire. And it's attainable only through proactive combination therapy. There is a new mechanism. Let's do one more, okay? Here's the one for Subway, right? Eating healthy fast food is the key to losing weight and it's attainable only through a diet based on Subway sandwiches. Seems very simple, but think about how novel and powerful that is. Eating healthy fast food, right there, that's something extremely you know, novel as a new opportunity, right? Healthy fast food, that by itself makes you stop and wonder, what the hell does that mean? It's almost like Henry Ford when he came up with the horseless carriage, right? See how this is working? is the key to losing weight, very simple desire, and it's attainable only through a diet based on Subway sandwiches, right? So that is how you develop your one belief. And again, when you develop something like this, it becomes foundational, right? In your copy, in your marketing, in your sales messaging, but you have to get the book to go through the 10 questions you must answer once you create that one belief. So that's the book of the week. I highly recommend it. It's great because while it's a short book, it does distill down some of the great lessons from copywriters of the past. Books like, let me grab them, Internet Magic. I'm lucky I caught those. So great books from ad advertising, such as How to Write a Good Advertisement, uh, The Ad Week Copywriting, uh, handbook by uh, by jo Joseph Sugarman, fantastic one. The Tested Advertising Message by John Caples, Ogilvy, um, and uh, Claude Hawkins, My Life in Scientific Advertising. Of course, I can't find it, but the you know uh, the historic uh, and legendary Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz. It distills a lot of those lessons into key points here, and you can you know if you've read those books, you, it really shines through. So. Definitely go out and get it. Highly recommend it. Happy Wisdom Wednesday. Be safe out there. And as always, I'll see you next week.